Here's part five of our conversation with Steve Hackett. You know, the Battle of the Epping Forest comes in like that's basically you trading off with with uh, Tony right in the beginning with the march. That That's basically you know, I, I, I had this thing where I used to do um, my early equipment. I used to have a, it, it was a fuzz box, probably a Marshall Super Fuzz or a Tone Bender. Then I put it through an Optivider, an Optivider, old piece of kit that I used, Jeff Beck used, all sorts of people. Then I also had this sound on sound aspect with with um, the Echoplex. And of course, like, you know, most analog stuff in those days, if you use the long delay, for instance, you, you could get it to fold on itself and it would crack up, start to distort. And the combination of all those things created the marching feet at the beginning of it. Um, and uh, it became a march in 7-8, which is quite rare, um, at the beginning of the song. And, um, of course, uh, yeah, we, we use a mixture of it, of it live. We use real flute now and, um, and a little bit of, um, I don't think it's, it's Mellotron flute anymore, but uh, it's probably an upgrade from that. But um, back in the day, of course, real flute and Mellotron mm -hmm. worked very well for the Genesis at times. Worked very well for the Beatles, of course. Uh, you come out of that song. I mean, you come in like a with a, like very subtle, of course. But at the end of it, I mean, and of course, it's a keyboard heavy song. I know, but it builds yep. and builds and it changes and changes. You come out of that like a bat out of hell. It's it's great the way you come out of that song. Yeah, the guitar goes nuts right at the end, and um, and it does that with a, a tricky truncated time signature. Um, and uh, whenever I play it live. I I always have to be on my metal to be able to to do that. But um, uh, I must admit, I've enjoyed doing that song in front of people these days because we kind of failed it back in the early days because we couldn't make things sound quite right in front of people with the technology we had then. Right. Uh, but it wasn't until I was working, funnily enough, very briefly with um, an Argentinian band called Genetics that I was playing a show with them. I was a guest with them. And they said, oh, shall we do Epic Forest? And I said, well, I haven't done that one for a long time. And I'll stand back and let you guys take it. And I thought how strong it sounded from the wings. I thought, I can see why people like this. You know, you've got to have the yeah. live experience of it where it tears into it. And I'm just coloring the keyboards with an edge of guitar and coming out with a few stabs. It's a bit like the, the guitar is another drum yeah. at times rather than trying to be heroic. That, that didn't always work with Genesis. You had to be subtle. The new single that's, that's out now, Deja Vu. Well, um, you know, that's from uh, the live show from Hammersmith. Um, and um, I think that Nad sings a very good version of it. It's a song that started out as a Peter Gabriel tune. It ended up becoming uh, one of mine. So I ended up completing it. And the band, the, the, with the version that we do, you know, it's really our version of a tune that's got um, history that, that dates right back to 1973. So if you can do the math, you know, that's a 47-year-old song right there. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Mm -hmm.